Hey guys, how's it going? It is story time with McBilly Boy here. And today I'm going to bring you something different. It's talking about my past with MMOs and just my experiences and stuff like that, right? We'll start out by saying that, you know, EverQuest, I've really enjoyed it for the time I've been playing it. But this is one of the games that I haven't grown up with, right? So we'll talk about the ones that I did grow up with, like World of Warcraft and RuneScape. And I did touch Guild Wars 1, not 2. Guild Wars 1 was pretty good. So we'll start out with uh, RuneScape. So some of the best memories of my childhood growing up was with RuneScape. RuneScape was one of those games that just kind of was different than everything. And I remember I was like, I don't know, in elementary, right? Even back then, elementary school, I seen people on the PCs in the PC room playing it. And back then, it was RuneScape Classic. RuneScape Classic was kind of just new to the time, and I haven't seen anything like it. So I got interested very quickly. Some of the kids in my class were very talented at it. They already were smithing like adamant and just, they really had a good understanding, a good grasp of it. But myself, I didn't. And I didn't play a lot of RuneScape Classic. I really started loving RuneScape when it turned into RuneScape 2. Like the one that we all love today. Old school RuneScape. That's the one. So when old school RuneScape came out, it was like 2004 or something like that. Um, just the change of the graphical design and just the way the game flowed, it was forever kind of um cemented in our memories now and just it's one of those games that continues to thrive off of not being the most beautiful thing to look at but gameplay wise you're, there's always room to add more and it seems that that game is just you can never not have good ideas for it and whenever you know jagex does put good, new ideas it's always ones that work there has been past like changes like the combat of evolution that just didn't work. A lot of people were very disappointed in that, especially me. Like as soon as they brought that out, I think a lot of players, they got the impression that the game was kind of dying and it was over. Too many changes can destroy things. And in that instance, it really did. They had a bunch of wilderness changes too, where you couldn't kill each other in the wilderness anymore. And then there was the whole trading thing where... You couldn't trade excess amounts of gold. There was like a 50k limit. There was another trading thing where like you could borrow, you could like essentially lend people items. And then after the lending period, like you could pay them for the lend, right? So say eight hours, 12 hours, something like that. They could pay you for it. And then after your item actually just gets deposited back in your bank, I'm pretty sure. So it's not like the player can keep the item. So that's... I thought that was pretty decent, actually, being able to like lend items to players. That was a cool idea, but they, they got rid of that as well. One of the best moments of playing RuneScape was when I used to play with my cousin. And this was back 2005. It was a little bit later after the game was released. Um, I was living in a different house, and at the time there was no cell phones no anything like that we didn't even have like vent because we were we were just dumb little kids we didn't know anything like vent wasn't there we didn't have skype because it wasn't around at the time so what we had to do is we picked up our landline phones so back then you got these landline phones you would just dial up the number you had to know the person's home number right that's that's the whole trick to it so i'd call them up and i'd put them on speaker and then we would just play runescape we we're, he was like, "Do you want to make new guys?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, let's make new guys." So we we decided to make new guys. I had a character named Aronsky O. <laughs> uh, it was awesome. His name his character's name was Zinc Two Twenty, just some weird name like that. And started Tutorial Island. It was just a blast. And getting straight off to Tutorial Island, we had a little shred of knowledge of like what to do a little bit but not too much. So we kind of ran down to Karamja, like the Karamja Isles. Took the ship for 30 GP over to, yeah, Karamja, right? You, you start in Port Sarim. My bad, guys, my bad. 
So you go to Port Sarim, and then you jump across to Karamja Islands. We then started picking bananas, and we picked bananas for hours. You pick, I think it's 10 bananas, or 20, and you go put them in a box, and then you go talk to the dude, and he'll give you 30 GP. We did that for hours. We ended up having like 2k each money, and back then, that was good. Like, that's real good money back then. Especially if you didn't have a wiki, especially if you didn't have resources to look at, money makers, nobody knew anything. And I think that's really another factor of why these old games, they feel so good and so nostalgic because without you knowing anything is better than knowing everything, right? If you know everything, it becomes boring very quickly. But if you know very little and everything's a mystery, the game feels magical. A lot of games, they get annihilated quickly because everything's on the internet in like two days, right? A game will drop. Every shred of information is on the internet already. At your fingertips, you do whatever you want with it. Like the best builds, the best items, little special locations to find the stuff. You name it, it's out there already within a day or two, right? That's annoying to me. I prefer games to be a little bit mysterious. I prefer games to not get spoiled. Spoiling games is exactly the same as spoiling movies. We live in a culture of spoiling. We spoil things for each other, and we think it's good. I get it. A resource like a wiki or you know, even asking Google is great. If you, if you really want that, right? But it's just everywhere in your face. Like it, at this point, it's almost like cheating, right? You go cheat in a game just to get a little bit further. Well, everyone's fucking doing it, right? Well, everyone's going to be looking up the best thing because they want to be the best. It's just this rat race. Gaming has turned into like a rat race almost. And it's whoever's the best, whoever can figure this out first. And it's just all the resources is out there. I don't know, man. It just doesn't feel as good. But getting back to the story, we both had our like 2K GP and we headed back to the Port Sarim and there's like a battle axe shop there. So we both bought like a black battle axe and we started training with those. It was really fun. You guys like early RuneScape, some of the best memories I've ever had. And it just holds a special place in my heart. And uh, I still play it to this day. Like I still play um, my Iron Man. Uh, he's close to 99 crafting at this point. He's just a really fun character. And I probably put like maybe four, four years into him. I got the 99 mining cape. I got fire making cape. I have my combat abilities are almost all maxed out. My character's looking pretty good. He's, he's a pretty good character. But let's move on. Let's talk about World of Warcraft now. So World of Warcraft was super special. Like if RuneScape was special, World of Warcraft was super special. The first time hearing about World of Warcraft was, I don't know, my dad one time, he's just like, picked me up from school and he's like, hey, there's this new game. It's called World of Warcraft. And at the time, I had no idea what World of Warcraft was. I've only prior played the Warcraft series games. So, you know, Night Elves with the dwarves and like the, you know, you know how it goes, like the orcs and shit right i didn't know anything at the time and so i asked my dad hey can you make like a spider character right can you make a spider because i was thinking of those like weaver spiders that you fight in raids and stuff and those the ones from like warcraft 3 i thought that that was going to be a playable character so my my kid imagination is kind of running wild i'm thinking like you know i'm gonna make that because i don't know what i'm talking about and i haven't seen the game yet so he says, you know, do you want to play? And I said, yes. So he sets up a little computer for me at his house and starts my little freaking 15 or was it $15? I think it was even cheaper back then. I think it was like 10 bucks. No, it was 15. Yeah, it was 15. So $15 subscription. I log in. First character I make is a gnome mage. I'm running around fire bolting everything. I was so young, I didn't even know how to get better spells. So I used 
the number one fireball for ages, man. I think I, I used it up until I was like level 18. And then my dad's like, hey, you know, like you haven't been buying anything and your bags are completely full. You're not even going back to the trader and selling your stuff. 11 year old me wasn't selling anything. And I was just keeping all the stuff and like I barely had any bags and just it was a mess. I would try to loot something and just get frustrated and like leave the leave that loot, right? Just leave it. I'm like, oh, this is so dumb. After he showed me that, after he showed me like trading and like showed me how to fix my armor after dying so many times and how to get a better spells by talking to the trainers, I started to pick it up more. But then I kind of lost interest in the mage. And I thought, you know, this character is kind of boring because all he does is cast fireball. Let's try something else. So then I made a rogue and I named him Skying Gone Me. It was an accident. I was going for Skying Gnome, but being an 11 year old kid, I totally misspelled Skying Gnome and, <laughs> and I put Skying Gone Me instead. So that was legendary. Got him to about level 30, and then my dad told me, you know, hey, buddy, why is your character's name Skying Gone Me? <laughs> and then I'm like, no, it's Skying Gnome. He's like, no, look at the letters. I'm like, oh, crap. And at that time, when you're a kid, you're just like, damn, I just got to get better at spelling. I got to do a bunch of stuff. And you couldn't change your name back then because once it's locked in, it's locked in. Like, there's no going back. I continued to play it th for like a couple years. And I think shortly after that, Molten Core came out. And my dad was a teacher at the time. And he taught, like, I think it was like elementary, but it was like grade eight or something like that. But he was like really good at talking. Like, he's professional at talking and getting his points across and stuff like that. So he was the raid leader, like, naturally, just a natural born raid leader. And. We went into Molten Core for the first time. I was level 58 because I just couldn't get up there fast enough. And everyone was kind of ready. So they went through Molten Core, I don't know, maybe like 10 times before I joined in. So they had a good understanding. They knew what they were doing. But they were still struggling with some of the fights. Because like I mentioned, there was no resources to kind of look up. Like, hey, how do you beat this? I mean, there kind of was. They knew how to get it. I was so young, I just didn't know how to like research stuff like that. So they had a, a better understanding of like beating it and like setting up the raid in a certain way. But back then, I don't think really anyone really knew how to, you know, maximize their character, play it at the full potential. Nobody used potions. Nobody, like some people would skimp out on buffs. Everyone was just weaker than they should have been like nobody knew potions were so good nobody knew that world buffs were so good nobody knew any of this stuff like it was just a brand new time in a brand new era with a brand new game and the game didn't hold your hand it just said go ahead try to kill this that's cool i really like that one time he was setting up the gar fight it was the gar fight it's the one with all those rock guys and then there was gar in the middle you had to put skulls and like all those icons. So he put the icon of the skull on one minion and the X on the other one. And he went through that. He would do that, right? And then explain to the group, hey guys, this is what we're going to do. Kill this one, this one, this one. Put this one over there. Uh, banish this one. Um, kite this one. Just sort of things like that. Somebody accidentally ran in there and wiped the whole party. Everyone died. And you know what? It takes ages to come back and get all your bodies. Like going back into the dungeon instance, you res at the, at the entrance for anyone who doesn't know this, right? But you um, essentially have to rebuff. You have to resurrect. You have to do all that shit before you get another attempt. And I'm not even kidding you. Each attempt was like 30 minutes, man. 30 minutes. So you can tell, like, everyone was kind of mad about that. He had good patience, though. He never freaked out. He never did anything like that. I've, I've seen raid leaders. They'll freak out, kick somebody out, right? 
have a little temper tantrum. He never did that. He was cool, collected, knew what he was talking about. So raids were really fun. And I just remember raiding with them for a while after that, got to level 60, and I was starting to fill up my Night Slayer's outfit, the eight set piece for Molten Core. But I could never fill out the entire set because I had karate class on a Thursday. And on Thursday, we would kill the boss that dropped the shoulders. So I could never get my freaking hands on those shoulders. Or any of the times that I was there, it just never dropped. Or if it did drop, somebody was already on the higher list to get it. See what I'm saying? So I never, ever got the shoulders. It was a seven out of eight pieces that I had. And the one time I was at karate class, I asked my dad, hey, did, uh, you know, the boss drop the shoulders? He's like, yes, they did. And somebody else took it. I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, man, no way. So I never got the shoulder pads. And I was pretty sad about that. But I moved on. It's fine. Things happen. Shortly after that. Oh, no, actually a long time after that. No, it wasn't short. I think I took a very long break. BC came out. That was incredible you guys bc burning crusade was one of the best expansions in my opinion that was ever created for that game you were in outer space you went into a dark portal that was green the one that you've seen on the freaking cover of the game and the loading screen so it's a big deal you guys going in there you would see that giant boss i can't remember what his name is but he was a giant boss and then there was the fell reavers that roamed around the lands. Being level 60, that, that thing would squish you in one hit. You'd be dead. You're dead in one hit if that thing hits you. They had these really cool threats like that roaming around, causing problems for players. And I thought that that was the way to build a game like that. You know, Seeing now, you know, playing EverQuest, they should have kept that formula going because that's fun. There was a bunch more areas like Nagrand that were very special. You know, the fighting arena one. Nagrand had the, uh, the instances in it. There was like, I think there was like three or four of them all in one. They had uh, some very cool kill quests, like killing big troll guys and stuff. Uh, and then after that, I would see people flying around with like their flying mounts and stuff. The first one you would get is very expensive. Or no, it wasn't that expensive. It was, it was kind of like, it was a thousand, thousand gold. I'm pretty sure it was a thousand, right? And then the one after that was 5,000. So the first one you would get would only be like, I think it was like a 60 speed. Like it was so bad, you guys. Like the first mount you would get is just brutal. Like it's not even worth having, but you kind of needed it still just to like fly around. So I remember a lot of people getting that and just wanting, you know, the fast one, the 280. So you'd spend your 5,000, you'd get your 280, then you were zooming. Man, you were a rocket back then. You fly that mount, you could get to point A to point B. It made the game feel small, man. That's how big, the, like, that's how big of a difference it made. Then there was one more mount. I'm going to mention it. There was one more special mount when, when uh, Sunwell came out. Ashes of Alar. I've seen players fly around back then. It was magical. That thing did not require any flying training whatsoever. And it came with 330 speed or 310. I can't remember. It's one of the two. 310 or 330 speed. This thing was noticeably faster than everything else. And to this day, I still feel it is the coolest mount ever made in that game. Besides maybe Invincible, but that's way later. Ashes of Alara was the coolest mount. Years passed after Burning Crusade. And I was playing and I talked to my friend Chris. Chris has been around since Vanilla. But I didn't talk to Chris until I was like 19. And then I got in touch with him and we started playing ever since. Chris is one of my best friends. One time, I went to Sunwell and I was like level 85 or something like that, right? I just wanted to check out the raid. I kind of wanted the mount. I was collecting things. So was here. I went into Sunwell. And 
was looking around because I had no prior experience with this place. I had no idea what like loot dropped or anything like that. I started killing things and then I found, you know, the Phoenix boss. So I just assumed that the Phoenix boss was the one that drops, you know, the mount. It would just make sense, right? I didn't get it. I didn't get the mount, right? I, I talked to Chris and I'm like, buddy, you know, I tried to kill the Phoenix boss or like I didn't even mention the Phoenix boss. I, I just said I didn't get the mount. And he's like, oh, that's okay. You know, I've been trying to do that for a little bit now, and I have no luck either. And I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. I'll just come back next week. So I stopped talking to him. I hung up the, the conversation on Skype, and then I kept going. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to finish this dungeon. I'm going to see what it's about. So I completed, I, like, I, I continued going through the dungeon. I got to the last throne room with the final boss there. I failed. I actually died on him. He killed me. Because he's got these like kill mechanics where if you're not careful, if you're standing in a bad spot or something like that, you're going you're gonna to die. And that's what happened. I got squished. I wanted to quit. I actually did. I just wanted to give up and just say, you know, I'm done. I just want to come back next week and try to get the Phoenix boss mount again. Right? Kill the boss again. Just get the mount. For some reason, I don't know what happened that day. I just decided, I'm like, you know what? I want to kill this guy. I don't even care. I just want to kill him. So I did. And I'm not even kidding you guys. I was looking at the loot. I was scrolling through. You know, there was a plate armor, some laggings, maybe a weapon, some scroll thing. You know, you had to like loot, like you, you scroll down with the loot, right? So I'm scrolling down and there it is. Ashes of Alar, bro. And this was like a 0.5% drop rate. Even when they, yeah, like it's crazy. Like it was a 0.5% drop rate. I got it. And then I told Chris, I'm like, Chris, I got the mount, bro. I got the mount. Like I, I was so happy. I'm like, I got the mount, bro. He's like, yeah, you, sure you did. You just told me you didn't. And I'm like, dude, I just got the mount. I promise you. He's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I'm like, okay, Chris, Chris. Just meet up, meet up, and I'll show you the mount. Like, just meet me somewhere in the game. He's like, okay, fine, fine, right? And when Chris came, I showed him a different mount. I showed him, <laughs> you know, the Griffin one? Just the really piece of shit Griffin. Uh, the 280 speed, just crappy thing. I think it was the red version. He's like, yeah, okay, you're so funny. And I'm like, okay, Chris, check this out now. And I, I mounted up, and he's like, holy shit. You actually got it. And I'm like, yeah, Chris, I thought that the Phoenix boss dropped it. And no, dude, the final boss dropped it. And he's like, oh my God, that's crazy. Because he didn't believe me, man. He did not believe me. And he's like, well, it just kind of makes sense that the Phoenix boss kind of looks like the one that would drop it, right? And no, dude, like, oh my goodness. And I remember at the time, I think he had like, the blue phoenix like you could get this like special one from doing like missions or achievements or something so he like mounted up with his blue phoenix but oh dude the blue one is nothing compared to the original the original phoenix it had those like tail kind of like confetti almost like when it flew it was just a marvel to look at it didn't have legs so it could like hover on the ground when you like go to the ground just the coolest mountain in my opinion and um uh, yeah, guys, that's that's basically my stories about my MMO experiences back then when I was just a kid and when I was like a little bit older when I got I got the mount when I was a little bit older, like I was must have been like 20, 22. Yeah, the game's been around for a while, so hope you guys really liked the video. Hope you guys liked the uh, the story time today. Um. Yeah, I'll try to make more of these videos. I, I know you guys really like them, and I'll catch you next time. Later, guys.